Five years ago, if you asked me this same question, which deep learning framework should I use? I'd be telling you about six deep learning frameworks. MXNet, CNTK, Chainer, Keras, Tiano, and Cafe. Fast forward to 2020, uh, they are pretty much all dead. And the only two frameworks that matter are TensorFlow and PyTorch. Unless if you're developing some uh, exotic JVM deep learning applications, you'll be using DL4J. Okay, so let's briefly go through the history of how both frameworks, both PyTorch and TensorFlow came to be. So using Google Trends here, we can see that the initial uh, release of TensorFlow happened in November 2015. And we had a huge spike here as it was probably uh, like heavily hyped as the whole deep learning field currently is. And then we had some bust here. So fast forward a year later, uh, PyTorch uh, was initially released in, in uh, I think September 2016. And by then uh, TensorFlow already gained a lot of traction as you can see here. And it took a while but fast forward to 2020, they pretty much converged here. Let's briefly go into the worldwide uh, view here. And you can see that TensorFlow is still more popular than, uh, than PyTorch. Also, if we take a look at uh, GitHub repos, uh, TensorFlow has got uh, 148K stars, and uh, whereas PyTorch has uh, around 50K uh, stars. Now, looking at this data from Google Trends and GitHub, you may say, well, okay, like uh, PyTorch kind of caught up, but TensorFlow is still more popular. But is it? So now in this video, I'm going to give you uh, an overview of these two uh, frameworks along uh, two dimensions. So the first one being uh, the general ease of development. How quickly can you prototype something? How quickly can you do research? And the second dimension is, can you deploy it? How easy is it to deploy your models once you train them and push them to production? Now, what this video is not, it's not uh, me telling you go use TensorFlow or go use PyTorch because neither Google nor Facebook is paying me to do this video. So what this video is, it's my review uh, based on my research I've done uh, on this topic. After this video, you'll know which framework makes more sense depending on your particular context. So unfortunately, TensorFlow has got this nasty history with static graphs and that was the TensorFlow version 1.0 where you basically had to define um, a static graph of your neural network before you start using it. And it was very hard to debug. It was not Pythonic and they are paying the price now because of that. In the meanwhile, uh, TensorFlow uh, released uh, TensorFlow 2.0, where they basically pretty much copied the uh, paradigm PyTorch is using and that's dynamic graphs, where you basically uh, create the graph of your neural network, like you'd uh, write a simple Python program. So I said nasty because now they have uh, problems with legacy docs. Is this 1.0 or 2.0? If you go and search your question on Stack Overflow, you'll sometimes get answer from version 1.0, which totally does not make sense for uh, TensorFlow 2.0. So 2.0 is also referred to as eager execution. And although it did brought uh, dynamic graphs with it, it's way slower than PyTorch is. And that's the second bad thing. Looking at the API itself now in 2020, uh, they pretty much have the same APIs. They've converged. Even uh, the one of the co-authors of PyTorch said himself in this tweet uh, that it doesn't make any sense to compare them anymore because they've converged so much in that sense. PyTorch, on the other hand, was Pythonic from the very start. It's super easy to learn. It's got awesome documentation. It's got awesome community. And there is no ambiguity between which version is it? Can I use this one? Can I use this one? Um, it's simple. So let's look at some curves. Uh, I don't want this to be me ranting about PyTorch is much better in research. Let's back this up with some numbers. Okay, so there is this awesome website, which I'll link in the description, uh, which is showing us the like relative popularity between TensorFlow and PyTorch. And if we look at the first graph here, you can see everything uh, above 50% means that uh, PyTorch is uh, better. So looking at the most famous conferences on computer vision like CVPR or a natural language processing like EMNLP or some more classic deep learning, machine learning conferences like uh, NIPS uh, and uh, ICLR, 
uh, PyTorch is pretty much beating TensorFlow. If we look at some other graphs, like the percentage of papers written in certain uh, framework, we can see that CVPR, like we, 30% uh, of the papers were written in, in PyTorch, whereas uh, only 7.7% uh, of the papers were written in TensorFlow, and we can see that the number is going down, whereas the PyTorch trend is not slowing uh, down at all. Uh, finally, the last plot just shows us the like the sheer number of papers written in certain framework. And CVPR again uh, had 418 papers written in PyTorch, whereas only 113 papers were written in TensorFlow. And again, the trends PyTorch is going up, TensorFlow is going down. It's pretty obvious that PyTorch is killing it in the research community. Now let's uh, take a look at the second dimension, uh, deploy the dam model to production uh, dimension. Now TensorFlow is much more mature along this dimension. So you have, so first it's backed up by Google. Secondly, it simply had more time to mature, uh, one year to be precise. So it's got TensorFlow serving. So it's a broad term for, let's say you, you have a web app, you have your model served there. And basically what it allows you to do is to seamlessly just kind of update the model on the fly without the users ever noticing that happened. So it's got a really strong support for that. It also has a strong support for uh, like deploying your models to mobile devices and also to uh, different kinds of IoT devices, embedded devices, that's known as TensorFlow Lite again. And uh, it also has um, this thing called TensorFlow JS, which enables you to deploy your models to, to the browser. PyTorch, on the other hand, has got uh, its own equivalents like PyTorch Serve. Uh, and PyTorch Mobile, which do pretty much the same things. They are just uh, much less mature than TensorFlow uh, versions. They both came uh, maybe less than a year ago, and they still have a long time to just become as mature as TensorFlow is in that aspect. On the good note, many companies like OpenAI are embracing PyTorch as their official framework of choice, which is really reassuring. Uh, also, Tesla is using PyTorch heavily, uh, and Andre Karpathy is being um, promoting PyTorch all over the place. Microsoft officially became the uh, PyTorch maintainer for Windows platform. Even big companies are starting to use PyTorch, which is a cool thing because they obviously have to deploy their models, uh, and that means they are betting that PyTorch will eventually uh, mature in that sense. As a general conclusion, if you're a startup, a business, and you want a, a cheaper product uh, that has some uh, machine learning, deep learning components in it, it's probably a safer bet to go with TensorFlow as, as it's got a really mature ecosystem of uh, deploying your models. On the other hand, if you're willing to bet that PyTorch will get there eventually and you just want to have the ease of development and uh, to be able to use the, uh, the best research out there, uh, I'd go with PyTorch. So for any one of you who doesn't have its own business, you just want to learn deep learning, I strongly suggest you start with uh, PyTorch. As a final note, it's worth mentioning that uh, FastAI is teaching its deep learning courses in PyTorch, and Stanford also started uh, teaching its courses in PyTorch, uh, which will, in my uh, opinion, uh, bias new graduates and new PhD students to love the framework and to start developing their own uh, startups using PyTorch, uh, which will actually put the inertia moment on PyTorch side, which was uh, till now on TensorFlow side. So hope you liked this video and found it useful. Uh, I'd love to know what's your favorite framework and why, and just comment down in the comment section and I'd love to hear your opinions on this one. Also, subscribe to this channel and gently click that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload a new video. Until next time, keep learning.